things are not going to get back to normal. The political and psychological changes wrought by COVID-19 will last long after the virus has faded. The world into which we emerge from the lockdowns will be poorer, colder, greyer, more pinched, more authoritarian. A collective threat of any kind, or at least a perceived collective threat, throws us back onto our most primal instincts. We become more hierarchical, less tolerant of dissent, more demanding of the smack of firm government. We've seen it the world over. People have not just acquiesced in the abandonment of their freedoms, they've demanded it. And they've become aggressive towards anyone who they perceive as an outrider. A parallel, in a way, can be drawn to the changes that followed the Second World War. In this, as in other countries, powers that the state had seized on a supposedly contingent basis during the mobilization were not returned when peace was restored. After 1945, Britain had emerged victorious, and yet we had identity cards until 1952, we had food rationing until 1954, we had full male conscription until 1960. And when we look at the economic controls that were supposedly put in for the war effort, we find that in fact, in many cases, they lasted until the Thatcher reforms of the 1980s. Indeed, in some cases, in elements of healthcare and education, we have them still today. We are a tribal species. We evolved in kin groups. We have a natural predilection for hierarchy, for being told what to do. Look at the uh, monarchical impulse that runs not only through our fairy stories, but even through our science fiction. I think of uh, the Star Wars franchise or any similar science fiction epics, and you'll see that it's filled with emperors and princesses and top-down hierarchical systems because somehow, on some deep genetic level, we regard that as the natural order of things. The last 200 years are a miracle in that they've elevated empirical knowledge, experience, over those natural instincts. We've learned by trial and error that elevating the individual over the collective and elevating the rules above the rulers serve to make us richer, freer and happier. But none of those lessons comes naturally. All of them have to be inculcated through a process of education and acculturation. The great writer Hannah Arendt once observed that every generation, Western civilization is invaded by barbarians. We call them children, she said. So think about that. The material with which you're made, the basic DNA that went into you is not so very different from that which would have gone in to a Homo sapiens born 10,000 years ago. Why do we live so much better than we would have done 10,000 years ago, or 1,000 years ago, or 500 years ago? Not because our nature is any different, but because we have learned in important ways to adapt, if necessary, to suppress elements of that nature so as to fit it to modern society. That's the real miracle of the last 200 years that has seen, as a, at a conservative estimate, a 3,000% increase in average global living standards. We now wield powers that previous generations would have attributed to gods or wizards. Ordinary people in this country and throughout the West have a living standard that a medieval king could not have dreamed of. Why? because we lifted the restrictions on human innovation and enterprise. We allowed people to relate one to another on the basis of free contract, rather than defining their relations through birth or caste or tradition. But none of that came easily. All of it flew in the face of what we think of as common sense, what we think of as natural and intuitive. And at a time of crisis like this, we are thrown back on our most basic caveman heuristics. Keep your kids close, hunker down, avoid strangers, they probably carry pathogens. And when you turn those instincts into public policy, you end up with closed schools, closed shops, closed borders, 
and an altogether more protectionist world. Now here is the really dangerous and disquieting thought. Maybe the world into which we are emerging as we haul ourselves from the chrysalis of lockdowns, maybe what people are calling the new normal was in fact normal all along. Maybe it's the last couple of centuries that were abnormal. Maybe we're coming to the end of a brief interglacial, a time when reason was elevated over dogma and when the individual was elevated above the tribe. The owl of Minerva, wrote Hegel, spreads its wings only with the gathering of the dusk. Maybe as it passes, we should take a moment to mourn the extraordinary success of the liberal world order, which before the virus hit was mopping up the last puddles of poverty on the planet, which was spreading education, spreading wealth, spreading longevity, literacy and happiness to every continent and archipelago. For the first time, our species lived in an age where ordinary people could expect wealth and freedom and happiness. By heaven, we're going to miss it when it's gone.